Greetings, my name is Rudimentary Rob. Welcome back to my Astroneer series. Today we're going to get on with the efforts of exploration on this otherwise beautiful planet called Sylvia. Yes, nearly forgot there for a moment. Um, here we are, we've loaded in uh, after activating our first gateway. So, pop on your favourite exploration backpack, uh, space-themed or otherwise, and uh, yeah, let's, let's get on with this and see what other new and interesting things we can find. Now, when you're out and about adventuring on the surface, this is basically a gold mine. Uh, when you find a bit of debris and it's got a battery on it, or it's got some solar or some wind, or a combination thereof. So, the thing it's plugged into is just scrap, basically. Uh, we will have the option of crunching that stuff up later. But for the moment, it is not even worthy of being called eye candy. Um, but this little wind turbine is very definitely a good find. So without uh, any uh, delay or consternation, we are going to lug this fella back to base and get him plugged in so that we can, uh, yeah, start taking advantage of this extra power. And here we are back at the base. Uh, this is a medium wind turbine and it requires a double socket type arrangement just like there is on that little uh, medium uh, platform. Uh, now these batteries, I was thinking I'll just leave them plugged into the HAB unit, but I have decided I've got enough of them that I'm just going to start daisy chaining them together. Uh, somewhere where I can kind of hear when they're getting depleted, uh, which is a sign that the uh, available power isn't really enough for uh, a sustained workload, I guess you could say. And also to hear when they're kind of charging up again. So uh, we're just going to plug them all in over here a little bit out of the way. Uh, as you can see, we've got a few of the little suckers now. And uh, they, uh, they are very handy for just, uh, I guess, softening the blow. So, with the exception of the RTGs, which stands for Radiothermal Generator, which provides power all of the time, uh, and the, you know, fueled generators, like the little small one I've got there on my backpack, or the medium generator a little bit later, which can provide uh, power so as long as they have fuel. The only other two ways of getting power is wind and solar. And obviously the wind doesn't always blow and the sun isn't always up. So an like an amount of battery storage is always going to be of use in your base. So yeah. Now we're doing a bit of a clean out of our backpack here. Uh, once again, apologies to the clean freaks out there who would like to see all of this stuff uh, packed away. Um, that said though, if you do play this multiplayer and you are experiencing a fair bit of lag, and you do have a lot of loose items on the ground, yeah, that is a situation where you should clean it up. But it's never an issue in single player, well, not unless you're, you know 
a fan of that Game It Out guy and you have his levels of stuff on the ground, yeah, it's probably going to slow your game a bit. But for a normal gameplay where you're not intentionally trying to break things, you have as much stuff on the ground as you feel you need and then later when you've got the materials and the motivation, you can go ahead and make a bunch of storage and, you know, start making things a bit more organised. Now, this little harmless flora thing is new, at least. It wasn't in-game last time I was playing uh, with any amount of regularity. Uh, so I'm not quite sure exactly how they work yet, but we'll, uh, we'll look into that one a bit later. Uh, in the meantime, we really need more science. So we're just going to work on gathering a few science samples to keep the... Uh, yeah, keep the little science generator going there in the background. Alright, now it's time to move on and we're going to see if we can locate the next uh, gateway in the series. Uh, we're going to try and locate another one of the gateways around the equator. Uh, so we've got some spare organic on us to power up the generators plus the three generators themselves. I mean, for the availability of orga um, organic and... Uh, compound we could just as easily be running around with an empty backpack to be honest because uh, between now and wherever the next uh, gateway is we're probably going to come across a ton of it anyway but uh, this particular episode was recorded after several 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 nights of uh, barely adequate sleep and when you're up at you know two in the morning and you're feeling like something nice and easy to do, you just load up your favourite little game, Astroneer at the moment, and uh, yeah, I just thought I'd record out a few uh, little sessions and edit those together. So this is the third of three sessions that I did uh, all in one morning, all starting from about two in the morning and finishing at about five-ish in the morning with a bit of a break in between. So... Yeah, there's probably not as much forethought in this episode, but that said though, we are definitely, uh, yeah, we're definitely starting to show our fatigue levels here.
Ah, here we go. Another new resource. Uh, actually, this one's really important. Uh, it's ammonium. And, uh, yeah, we're not going to be flying to another planet without ammonium. Just, just saying. So, we're definitely grabbing a bit of that. Ooh, hello. Small solar panel. Not going to say no to one of those either. Ah, been, been getting some really nice stuff so far. So, let's see how we go and see how well our luck holds up. Yeah, and if you're wondering why that other thing keeps popping up every time I'm going for my backpack, uh, yeah, the uh, default binding for the, uh, I guess you could say the science interface, is tab. And far, 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 far too many games I've played, played previously, tab loads your inventory. So, yeah decent sign that the uh, the fatigue levels are less than ideal uh, but I don't remember there being you know other than hitting the wrong button uh, there certainly wasn't any significant levels of stupid on display I think it was just a, a case of uh, bad coordination and uh, yeah Ah yes, and the magpie strikes again. I could see that this one uh, looked to be one of the power ones. And considering I'm walking around with a bunch of generators on my back, it just makes sense to, uh, you know, open these things up anytime I find them. Now, this is the second kind of power one. So this one isn't a trickle charge. This is a you need to deliver at least a certain number of units of power to it and as soon as you've done that it just instantly opens so they're probably at least on Sylvia um, where the power requirements to do that sort of thing are quite low they are quite easy to open uh, when you go to some of the uh, planets further on the difficulty kind of goes up a bit and so the amount of power that you need to open those things you know increases by a significant amount and well depending on what you've got with you at the time they may not be quite as easy to crack but then you will be getting a lot more science out of them so it all just sort of balances out. Wow, decent amount of resin and ammonia here. I must remember this spot uh, because there will be there will come a time where I'm going to be wanting quite a lot of ammonia, 
and uh, places like this will go a long way uh, towards uh, supplying me that ammonia. Now, we're experiencing a lot of indecision here, and it's because I'm following my own advice here. I'm, I'm sort of trying to stay on the equator uh, to make it easier to locate the next gateway. Uh, problem is, this was a bit of a fork in the road moment. If I went left or if I went right, you know, facing these this forest and these mountains, I was concerned that it was going to take me too far south or too far north. But then when you want to make your way through the mountains, it's, I'm going to say, a little bit of a pain in the backside because it's so lumpy and... You know, you got to go left and right and dodge caves and blah, blah, blah. And then you get these steep bits that you can barely walk up and, you know, moan, moan, groan, groan. Um, but I wanted to try and avoid having to do this and the prospect of picking the wrong direction and then running for 10 minutes only to realize I should have gone the other way. I didn't really want to do that. So here we are. We're running through the mountains. And as it turns out, in retrospect, had I turned left, I feel like that that would have been the route that would have got me to my destination a little bit quicker than what we've done. But, you know, we've got our tethers. We're going all right. Uh, we're just going to grab some more uh, compound here so we can make some more tethers. And then we'll be able to resume our journey. Yeah, I keep having a bit of a look around uh, just to make sure I hadn't already gone past the gateway because I felt like I'd already travelled enough distance, but clearly I hadn't because you can see uh, in, the, in my direction of travel there that there is just the very end of the pillar of light from the top of the gateway going up into the sky and uh, except... I've run out of tethers again, so I'm just having a bit of a look around for some more compound so we can uh, crank out enough tethers to get to our destination.
All right, here we are at the gateway. Uh, this is our second gateway we have discovered. And uh, complete with its usual amount of eerie music that we get when we arrive. Uh, they are a fantastic looking structure. Uh, except this one's uh, elevated very slightly out of the ground. Uh, so we're going to need to do a little bit of ramp building here because that's a little bit too high to jump. Uh, you could probably build a platform and then, you know, jump on the platform and then up on to the gateway, but I really don't want to go to that much effort. Uh, it's just as easy to make a little ramp like this so we can then get up on top. Uh, now I run the tether lines all the way to the uh, gateway for a reason that will become obvious very soon. Uh, but before we can do that, we need to unlock this gateway. So we're getting our little three generator combo on the go. And uh, yeah, we should have some success momentarily. Another piece of alien technology given a low-tech jump start and uh, here we are. Gateway number two is up and running. Now we could, you know, turn around and run back where we came from but as we saw that was uh, a fairly lengthy journey with its own share of, I will say, discomforts and irritations. So instead uh, we're going to use this gateway as intended and we're going to teleport ourselves back to the first gateway that we unlocked. And this is where it's important to have your tethers set up because obviously when you arrive uh, you're going to want some sort of air supply here otherwise what's the point in teleporting? So indeed the first base we had our tethers all set up oh, sorry first gateway I should say well we've got them at our first base as well obviously as well but uh, we are very much closer to home now and we're just going to run this uh, research sample back as well uh, because I think it's a pretty safe bet that the couple of samples that we had queued up when we left uh, yeah, they're, they're going to be long done by now, so I find it's always healthy to uh, bring a sample or three back with me whenever I return to base. Yeah, I'm just having a bit of a look around this uh, research unit just to see if it had any little extra plug sockets on it where I could put little power generators or batteries or whatever. But as it turns out, it doesn't. Uh, those couple of sockets on the end there are part of a broken off piece. And so they're just the same as when you see stuff plugged into the little broken platforms everywhere. Uh, when you're out and about so we're not going to be able to uh, plug in our little wind turbine there 
Uh, so instead, we're just going to socket it wherever we can find. Alright, and as I finalise a few little tidy ups and uh, start hooking some power generation into this platform, uh, we're now at the end of the episode. Uh, if you've enjoyed it, don't forget to give me a thumbs up and to consider subscribing if you haven't already done so. In the meantime, my name is Rudimentary Rob. Thank you very much for watching and have yourself an absolutely fantastic day. <laughs>